Greetings, unsettled souls. Yes. Welcome to the Correct News. Sam I be Angie doing political commentary for the meeting this week. So I don't normally go live on a Sunday night slash Monday morning. However, it's the 4th of July. So I am getting everybody a 4th of July show to wake up to. And then I'm going to do a show again tomorrow. It's probably not going to be a super long show. I have thought about making it the Dunce Cap of the Month award show tomorrow, but that's kind of a a time-consuming show. So we're going to looking at uh, the 4th of July today, and then tomorrow some 4th of July and maybe a little bit of um, uh, other news. And then either Wednesday or Thursday, the Dunce Cap of the Month show, because uh, we've got our printer working again, and we have to get last month's sent anyhow. And that, friends, uh, brings us into the 4th of July news. I'm leading off with the hill here, um, Trump versus the global elite. And we're going to get into his comments here on why this ties into the 4th of July, because this is a speech he chose to give clearly on uh, the weekend of the 4th. And I'm also doing a show that's not going to date it in terms of it needing to be the 4th of July. Like, we're not going to go over um, anything that you're not going to want to know about a week from now. So if you're finding this show later, as uh, many of you do, make sure that you don't uh, just zone out because I'm talking about the 4th. Because I'm talking about things that are going to matter well past that. Donald Trump has found a new enemy in his quest for the White House, and that is the global elite. And that and that's a pretty ballsy move. I'll tell you why as I go to screen share here. He's looking at uh, alienate alienating a lot of the people that usually bribe candidates here in a series of economic speeches. The presumptive Republican presidential nominee has railed against forces of globalization. Thank God arguing that challenges in the economy have betrayed workers and wiped out the middle class. Now, that's going to be important when we get to the WD of the day here in a minute, because globalization is this idea that sending other people's jobs in this country away somehow is a benefit to people in other countries. And then it all comes back in this world, this one big happy family. Well, it doesn't come back, okay? If I throw this laptop into the into the fire, it comes back as smoke, okay? It doesn't come back as a better laptop. Just because something changes in the global economy doesn't mean that it's good. It, it's usually bad. And that is why so many of us have enjoyed Trump's ascension here. Am I saying he's perfect? No, we're going to get to some of his faults in a minute. Um... At the center of the rigged economy, Trump argues, and I would say correctly so, are powerful corporations, media elites, and political dynasties, and his likely general election opponent, of course, Hillary Clinton. And, of course, we all know that Hillary Clinton and the Clinton the machine in general has been uh, chugging forward in favor of globalism. They supported NAFTA. They supported the outsourcing of American jobs and the destruction of our own economy. Um, Hillary Clinton and her friends in global finance want to scare America into thinking small, and then they want to scare the American people out of voting for a better future, Trump said Tuesday in a speech near Pittsburgh. I want you to imagine how much better our future can be if we declare independence from the elites who have led us to one financial and foreign policy disaster after another. And if you think that he's being um, incorrect here, then hear me out. We know from Ron Paul, we know from Rand Paul, we know from Justin Amish, we know even from some of the things that Alan Greenspan has said, that the elites have greatly damaged the economy and the lives of many people. Foreign policy disasters, look at Benghazi, which Hillary uh, brought in. Donald Trump isn't making this up as he goes. I'm not saying he's a perfect man, but he's a very good choice for president. I don't know why people insist on saying that he somehow is making this up or as he goes. He's not. These are rooted in facts. We know what Hillary has done. We know what Bill Clinton has done. I want you to imagine, he says, how much better our future can be. I love that. 
his rhetoric is unusual, it says, for a presumptive Republican nominee. In other words, they're kissing ass and he isn't. And it places him, though, in direct conflict with Washington business groups who have traditionally been allies in the JOP, GOP. Yeah, because they want to, uh, they want to bribe them. Uh, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, the Commerce does not endorse presidential candidates, but it unloaded on uh, Trump during his speech, rebutting him point by point for his criticism of trade deals like the TPP, the Trans-Pacific Partnership. Well, friends, the TPP is the very definition and the epitome of outsourcing. It is everything that will lead to the further erosion of our country and our middle class if we allow the TPP to come in. Okay, it's NAFTA 2.0. It is an absolute freaking nightmare. And Donald Trump is wise to point this out. In an op-ed the in the Washington Post, the chamber's president and moron should never be allowed to be so much as a spokesman for a, uh, I don't know, He'd be a good spokesman maybe for TEPCO because they're known for lies. Um, Thomas Donahue said both Clinton and Trump are wrong on trade. Let's get one thing straight. Ripping up trade agreements as presumptive Republican presidential nominee Donald Trump suggests and raising a tariff around the world, the U.S. economy would not bring those jobs home. Let me tell you what, Donahue, those things, in fact, will bring jobs home. Those are the kinds of things, you dumbass, that do, in fact, bring jobs home. Okay? I swear, it's the exact opposite of what you said. What a dumbass. Getting rid of trade agreements that are outsourcing will stop outsourcing. He just, what this dumbass just said was getting rid of deals that lead to outsourcing will not stop outsourcing. What a dumbass. Instead, it would decimate millions of high-wage American jobs and slam families trying to make ends meet. In other words, giving the middle class the jobs that they used to have is going to hurt them because now we are not sending those good jobs overseas. Does that make sense to anyone? Anyone at all? What well, this has to be the dumbest human being that God has ever given air to. Trump has treated such criticism as a validation. I would imagine so he should wear it like a badge of honor. It says validates his argument that business leaders are selling out American interests. They are, as I've just painfully showed you. The U.S. Chamber of Commerce is totally controlled by special interest groups, Trump said in defense of his campaign to possibly pull the U.S. out of the North American Free Trade Agreement, which is NAFTA, and thankfully the TPP. They want to have the TPP, he said, one of the worst deals. It would be the worst deal since NAFTA. Trump tweeted that the chamber should fight harder for the American workers because China and many others are taking advantage of the U.S. with our terrible trade pacts. Um, he's absolutely right. Absolutely right. In every possible way there, friends. Um, moving on, brought to you by a Seacrest Motel. I got a few people really asking about this place lately as we go into our next story. Seacrest, if you're going to Cedar Point, it's, it's that easy, friends. Go to the Seacrest Motel. Make sure you tell them you heard about it from the correct views. You are not going to believe the amount of money that you save when you do that. Uh, tell them I heard about it from Sam from the correct views, and you're going to be in heaven. Friends, um, this is a story on media ownership here. It's it's that part of this that I want to get to in our 4th of July show here. Uh, Donald Trump just said uh, we can stand up for the American worker better by keeping his jobs here. Well, let's see what Michael Snyder says here about media ownership and how it ties into our holiday here. How can we celebrate our independence when most Americans are willingly enslaved into the matrix? It says, did you know that the average U.S. adult consumes 10 hours and 39 minutes of media a day? 
Nielsen has just released brand new numbers. And uh, pretty much the way this breaks down here is um, in order of how the 10 hours come from live TV, time shifted TV, radio, DVD, video game, multimedia, internet, smartphone, and tablet. Now, some of this doesn't bother me so much in that I spend an unbelievably large amount of time on the computer because I, I do all the research for this show. And then I also go ahead and watch things and use it like a, a, a TV. I'm addicted to like old shows and documentaries. I, I'm watching uh, a lot of Dark Shadows right now. Um, I don't think just chilling out like that really counts. They're talking about this incessant must be locked on to the media. Like uh, my wife, Christelle, she cannot shut the phone off. Can't do it. Cannot do it. Her life revolves around her phone. She loves it much more than she loves me. The phone is everything. That kind of thing is what they're talking about here. And it says the endless barrage of news and entertainment and gaming, I would say, has fundamentally altered the belief system of tens of millions of Americans. According to the Merriam-Webster Dictionary, what we're talking about here is brainwashing. Okay, it's an absolute brainwashing. Listen to this. It says, who do you think controls the vast majority of the news and entertainment that we consume? As he wrote about recently, more than 90% of what we get through our televisions is controlled by six giant media corporations and in turn are controlled by the elite of the world. So you've got the very people who are trying to make you believe a certain thing. The elite, the corporate, the corporate owners, the politicians, that's who the elite are. They are owning the stocks and calling the calls and making the shots on six media corporations, which give you and I 90% of all of the entertainment and media that we receive. That's why you'll be watching a vampire story like True Blood and suddenly you find out what you're really watching is a propaganda for a homosexual lifestyle. Now I don't care if you do or do do or do not engage in such things, but my point is they program you in a certain way. And this happens because we as a nation have allowed the entire media to consist of just six media corporations. And uh, it says that a majority of Americans cannot shut it off. And I know Christelle is one of them. They cannot stop it. They cannot shut it off. They cannot turn it down. I have offered her $50 to shut her phone off for one 24-hour period, allowing for all emergency texts of injured or sick family members to come to me. Cannot do it. Cannot do it. Can't. Think about that. We cannot go. I can. We cannot go one day without our phones. How many of you listening to this would be like, man, I'd take that money and run. Here's what's more frightening. How many of you listening to this couldn't do it? That's amazing. Meanwhile, the world goes on around us and we're programmed to think certain things because of the constant intake that destroys our ability to focus on anything. Uh, moving on, friends, this is from Sticker Junkie. You can see right there when you get your stickers made from Sticker Junkie on checkout, type in correct views or the correct views. You're going to get savings. Rutherford.org, We the Prisoners, The Demise of the Fourth Amendment by John W. Whitehead, seen there. Um... He looks remarkable for his age, by the way. Um, here's a big issue here. Donald Trump is painfully wrong on the Fourth Amendment. Like Gary Johnson is painfully wrong on outsourcing and immigration. Donald Trump is painfully wrong on the Fourth Amendment. And Hillary Clinton is painfully wrong on damn near everything. The Fourth Amendment matters, friends. The Fourth Amendment is your right to, to go down the street and not be bothered by authority for something that you may or may not have done based on whatever set of criteria they choose to use this week. Um, 
you have long hair, or the color of your skin, uh, the kind of car you drive, whatever BS they want to use as an excuse this week. Um, this is from the Atlantic. It's Tanishi Coates. Our carceral state, that means incarceration, the idea of locking people up. Our carceral state banishes American citizens to a great wasteland far beyond the premises and protection that the government grants to other citizens. When the doors finally close and one finds oneself facing brandishment in the carceral state, the ears, the walls, the rules, the guards, and the inmates' reactions vary. Some experience an intense sickening feeling, others a strong desire to sleep, visions of suicide or a deep shame, a rage directed towards guards and other inmates, utter disbelief. And the incarcerated attempt to hold on to family and old social ties through the calls and visitations. At first, family and friends do their best to keep up, but calls to prison are expensive, and many prisoners are located far from one's hometown. And needless to say, things finally fade away, and they're forgotten in prison. That's what it's getting at here. Well, let's look at the way our world is becoming more and more like a prison with guards looming in all directions as i wrote about uh, you can look at the song uh, we're on for your mind at passing time does it deals with this very topic um we're talking about the fourth of july and freedoms right well as john whitehead writes here and i agree with it with every new law enacted by federal and state legislators Every new ruling handed down by government courts and every new military weapon, invasive tactic, and egregious protocol employed by government agents, we, the people, the prisoners of the American police state, are being pushed that much further into a corner with our backs against a prison wall. This concept of a carceral state in which we possess no rights except for that which the government grants of an as-needed basis is the only way I can begin to comprehend, let alone articulate, the irrational, surreal, topsy-turvy, through-the-looking-glass state of affairs that is being imposed on America today. And I thought this was very important to read on the 4th of July. As I point out in my book, Battlefield America, The War on the American People, we who pretend to be free are no different from those who spend our lives behind bars. We're experiencing the same phenomenon that we just read about at the beginning of this that Tanishi Coates wrote about. The government doesn't obey the law, but we have to obey their laws. For instance, in a recent 4-3 ruling in Utah versus Sheriff, the U.S. Supreme Court opened the door for police to stop, arrest, and search citizens without reasonable suspicion of probable cause, effectively giving police the green light to embark on a fishing expedition for one's person and property, rendering Americans completely vulnerable to the whims of any cop on the beat. In other words, giving cops the right to pull you over for anything at any time and question you about anything at any time just to get money out of you, because there's a lot of money in finding you. There's a lot of money in incarcerating you in the uh, private prison system. They even have quotas. Justice Sonia Sontemeyer uh, thankfully said that the discovery of a warrant of an unpaid parking ticket will forgive a police officer's violation of the entire Fourth Amendment. Listen to the wise words here. We don't have very many wise people in our government anymore. So, okay, so when Sontemeyer speaks here, you're going to want to listen. It, it matters. The court has allowed an officer to stop you for whatever reason he or she wants, so long as he can point to a protectual justification after the fact. The just, In other words, as long as he can prove he did it for a reason when he didn't already have a reason. That's what uh, Sontemeyer is saying here. That justification must provide specific reasons why the officer suspected you breaking the law. But it may factor in your ethnicity, where you live, what, in other words, what color of skin you have, or maybe you live in a, crime, a high crime area, or what you're wearing. Maybe you have on a, a, a Metallica t-shirt and they think you look like a headbanger and a, and a headbreaker, or how you behave. The officer does not even need to know which law you might have broken, so long as he can later point to any possible infraction. Even one that is minor, unrelated, or ambiguous. In other words, you get pulled over for weaving, 
You pass your DUI, but he notices you have an unpaid ticket, so he arrests you. That kind of thing. That's supposed to be illegal searches and seizures, friends. That's why the Fourth Amendment was written to protect you. That's why Trump is wrong, as I was saying we were going to get to. That's why Trump is painfully wrong when he attacks Snowden. Snowden is a hero, okay? He pointed out how our government is destroying the Fourth Amendment. Sotomayor goes on, the indignity of the stop here at 420 is not limited to an officer telling you that you look like a criminal. The officer may next ask you to consent to inspect your bag or purse without telling you that you can decline. I want to pause there. Um, I once had an officer in Sandusky pull me over. And he did. I, I put my headlights on right when I was coming out of the BP. And he didn't like the way that I happened to put the lights on. So he asked for my ID and I gave it to him. And he asked if I would come out of the car and answer some questions. I said that I understood that I did not have to do so, but that I would. He then asked for permission to search the car, which I did not give him. Not because I had anything to worry about, but because it was none of his damn business. Um, I instructed my wife to do the same, and she did. I refused to consent to any searches and seizures, and he had no reason to get in. And thankfully, he was an honest cop. To give him credit, he was. And he was you are allowed to decline such. Regardless of your answer, he may order you to stand helpless, perhaps facing a wall with your hands raised. If the officer thinks you might be dangerous, he might then frisk you for weapons. This involves more than just a pat down. As onlookers pass by, the officer may feel with sensitive fingers every portion of your body. A thorough search may be made of your arms and armpits, waistline, back and groin, an area about the testicles and the entire surface up and down the feet and legs. Does that sound like unneeded search and seizures to you? Okay. We have breath draws and blood draws, even though some mandatory blood draws do violate the Fourth Amendment. Birchfield versus North Dakota. You're going to want to remember that. Um, ignorance of the law, though, it's defensible if you work for the government. Because police officers who violate the law can be granted immunity. But if you break a law and you didn't know about it, you're doomed. We have high-speed car chases. You're allowed to have no-knock raids. If you're the police, you can just go into somebody's house with not even knocking. Uh, uh, oftentimes attacking or terrifying and uh, harming the wrong people. Warrantless searches by police. It says police can now carry out warrantless searches of your homes based on simply a reasonable concern. And the Nazis had reasonable concern, friends. That doesn't cut it. It doesn't cut it. They can do this if they lie, even, and say that you were trying to destroy evidence, uh, fleeing or hurt, even if it's the wrong house. Force DNA extractions. Police can forcibly take your DNA, whether or not you've even been convicted of a crime. Strip searches, often done on the side of the road, even involving anal and vaginal probes. They can seize your money even not knowing whether or not you it's, it's legally yours or not. A search warrants on a leash. The police have free reign to use drug-sniffing dogs as search warrants on leashes. In other words, if somebody may have been in your car that smoked weed and left the residue on your seat, they can say they smell the weed in your car and search it even though you've done nothing wrong. Police and DUI checkpoints. Friends make no bones about it. A DUI checkpoints are absolutely illegal but they can conduct sobriety and information-seeking checkpoints for no reason at all. Interrogating public transit passengers on buses, warrantless arrests for minor criminal violations, such as seatbelt violations. We're finding arrests for those now. Stop and identify. Refusing to answer a policeman when he asks your name can rightfully be considered a crime. Traffic stops. Police have reasonable cause to believe that a traffic violation has occurred even if they has not go through your car. And it goes on, anonymous tips. In other words, you have a revenge on somebody, so you put in an anonymous tip and they just go through your car. This is the freaking world that we live in. And we're celebrating the Fourth Amendment, or the Fourth of July, as if it still matters. I'm sorry, maybe it freaking doesn't. Maybe it absolutely doesn't, because I'm not particularly in a good mood this 4th of July. 
I don't think anybody has any idea what the 4th of July even is other than a pretty firework display. Okay, and I did go to a pretty firework display. My point is, nobody talks about it. Nobody cares about it. Nobody gives a rat's ass that that entire litany of things that I gave you is happening. It's happening right now, friends. Anybody even listening? I'd be amazed if you are. You're probably just watching fireworks. I don't know. I do know that we're on to the dumb D of the day. And it goes to Robert Reich. To quote uh, Rush Limbaugh. Rush always lampooned this dumbass. And I certainly see why he did. Let me get rid of the dumb D. Oh my god, friends. So many dumb deeds, so little time. Clinton Labor Secretary warns against Fourth of July Americanism. In other words, if you don't celebrate the Fourth of July exactly the way they want you to, and you might be the least bit, you know, on PC according to their rules, then you know, you you're you don't care about other cultures because you love America. Anybody else think that's stupid? Uh, is anybody listening at all? Listen to this, friends. Former Secretary of Labor and the, uh, he as should be lampooned by Rush Limbaugh from the Clinton administration. And this guy shouldn't be allowed to teach a, uh, this guy shouldn't be allowed to teach dog tricks on Sunday. He's the current University of California Berkeley professor, which shows how horrible that school has fallen, as Michael Savage said. Robert Reich wants Americans to be vigilant this 4th of July. No, not against terrorism, but against exclusive patriotism that asserts a unique and superior Americanism. In other words, you have to know that you don't want to offend the illegal alien who snuck into the country and doesn't really give a damn about America. You have to realize that America needs to be open to everyone. Aww. Even if they're here illegally, gangbanging. We hear a lot about patriotism, especially around the 4th of July. But in, in 2016, we're hearing about two different types of patriotism, according to this dumbass. One is an inclusive patriotism that binds us together, and one is an exclusive patriotism that keeps others out, as Bonehead writes. Reich claims that we are now hearing a strident, exclusive patriotism. It asserts a unique and superior Americanism that's determined to exclude others beyond our borders. In some instances, others beyond our borders do, in fact, need excluded. And I support the excluding of them and make no bones about it. Reich, who served as Bill Clinton's Secretary of Labor, how, I don't know, from 93 to 97, cites supporting tax cuts. So if you support tax cuts, if you want more jobs to come to America because our jobs... Our job leaders can hire more people. Uh, building a border wall, in other words, if you think that you should have to come into the country legally. And celebrating entrepreneurship, in other words, wanting to not have to work for somebody else like I have to and hate your life every day that you have to go and do it. Then you are exclusively patriotic. This is what this dumbass writes. Donald Trump famously wants to ban all Muslims from coming to America. Pause. No, he doesn't. He wants to put a brief pause on who's coming to America until such time as they can be properly vetted and we can know who they are and why they're here. So Reich lied there. And build a wall along the Mexican border to keep out Mexicans. That's not true. He wants to build a wall across the Mexican border to keep illegals out. So he's now lied twice, Mr. Reich. Exclusive patriotism tells us to fear foreign terrorists in our midst. Guess what? We should fear foreign terrorists in our midst. He says even though almost every terrorist attack since 9-11 has been perpetrated by American citizens or holders of green cards, uh, the way the green cards are given oftentimes need to be more controlled. 
And as for American citizens, that's growing less and less untrue, especially as we look at things like the Orlando shooting, which was from somebody that had no business being here. We need to monitor radical Islam, even if it's not politically correct. It doesn't matter if it's politically correct. It matters if it's right or wrong, and it's right. That's why I'm telling you it's right. It's real easy. Inclusive patriotism instructs us to join together for the common good. The right says, such patriotism requires taking on a fair share of burdens and keeping America going, including paying taxes. In other words, if you think the taxes should be less, then you are not doing your American duty on the 4th of July. Never mind the fact that we are overtaxed and underpaid already. Higher taxation only leads to less hiring, and that leads to less jobs and a poorer economy and a poorer nation. Which, of course, we know the left wants to bring us. Exclusive patriotism, this bonehead writes, celebrates the acquisitive individual and lone entrepreneur. Well, if you're not a lone entrepreneur, then you're trapped in a job where you do nothing every day. Your life toils away and you wonder why you even wake up. I know I do it all the time. So what, what, you, what you end up with here is these, these idiots telling you that if you don't think like they do, that you're not patriotic, when the way that they think, Mr. Reich, is the way that destroys the country and actually hurts patriotism. So if you want to know the direction that America needs to go in, then look at the ideals of Ron Paul. To a lesser degree, look at the ideals of Donald Trump. If you want to know the direction the country doesn't need to go in, then look at Hillary Clinton. Look at Elizabeth Warren selling out her own people. Look at that. And that's all you need to know, friends. That's your 4th of July show. I'll be on with a shorter show tomorrow. Good night. God bless. Hit share. And for the love of God, learn what the Fourth Amendment is.